was only by chance that I started playing rugby. I never quite felt good enough or worthy of the fuss that seemed to get made. Playing with so much class and awareness. Sefo and Sefo shrieking awake. And hasn't she been phenomenal for Australia? I wasn't coping until I completely couldn't. I found an incredible community in rugby. I grew up in New Zealand. Um, I'm from a small forestry town, Tokoroa, in the Waikato. Kubi was quite sick when she was little, just with hearing problems and everything like that. And that, I think, has played a part in what sport she's played. I actually started doing ballet. That was my big love. She did ballet for about six years. Then she wanted to do athletics, and she started that when she was a six-year-old. I did athletics, swimming, cycling, triathlon. I did naturally pick up things quite easily. I'm half deaf. Um, I've lost high pitch in one and I've got complete nerve deafness in the other. It was hard for me to communicate with other people. There was definitely anxious tendencies, not just in sport, just in life in general. My mental health was a constant battle. I think the diagnosis came around my mid-teens. I think I was around 15, 16. It definitely kind of exposed me to the severity of what depression or anxiety could lead to. At the time, I knew it was problematic, but I, I didn't know what to do with it, so I just carried on. I was just kind of floating around Hamilton. Things with my mental health and my behaviours had probably gotten a lot worse. I was just sort of self-destructing in Hamilton and then I decided to make the move over here to Australia. I just needed a clean slate and I needed to get out of where I was. Everything changed when I found rugby. When I moved to Australia, I took up dragon boating. And then when she moved, and she knew my dragon boat friends, so she thought, oh, well, I'll, I'll give that a whirl. And that's what got her into rugby, believe it or not. We were sitting in a boat with my um, other Wallaroo teammate and um, Kirby and her mum rock up really late. And then we both just look at each other and go, rugby material. And just straight off the bat, I said, no, <laughs> thanks. Val ended up getting me, convinced me to go and watch. Sunnybank was playing, I turned up to watch and they coincidentally didn't have enough numbers and they're like oh we've got kit you know you can borrow some boots and they put me on. I couldn't believe that she just took to it and she tackled somebody who was huge. I was like oh where did she learn that? I think I just sort of got a little bug from it there and I just kept going back I think after that. She didn't give up it was like rugby is a hard sport but she stayed with it. I think they saw the potential in her being able to become a better player. A Queensland Reds coach that was there mentioned to Val to ask if I wanted to go along in trial and again I just said no, thank you. <laughs> but um, Val and another person, Paris, they actually picked me up and they took me to the Queensland trials. I ended up making the 23 squad and I had about four games of Body under my belt. <laughs> and I don't think Kirby expected to be selected, but we were just over the moon for her that she was selected. I met her at Queensland Reds and it was actually a really funny situation at the we were doing line out practice and no one actually knew that Kirby was deaf in the left ear and we kept calling these line out calls and Kirby she just wasn't getting it and we were like, mate, what, what's going on? What's going on? And all of a sudden she said you know, I'm, I'm deaf in my left ear, you need to talk in my right ear. And, you know, once we got that sorted, it was all smooth sailing from there. I had finally made it, and then I just left. Being offered a contract 
Four Sevens was a, it's a pretty vivid memory because again I often questioned why I was ever in that environment. I never quite felt good enough or worthy of the fuss that seemed to get made over it. Whereas I would be so excited for um, you know friends or family who had done things, but I just couldn't quite give myself the same celebration. Once I got down there, even then I wasn't consciously aware that I wasn't coping until I completely couldn't. She gives it everything that she's got. And she is strong, but everyone has their point of what you can take. Things had finally reached a, an end point for me where I just was almost like hysterical one night. I was living with Shano and with her help, she obviously knew things weren't going well. We'd try and help each other out and I was always the bubbly one to try and, you know, bring the energy and stuff like that. But yeah, there were definitely days where, where Kirby struggled and we needed that extra help. Shano was really great. She contacted my mum back in Brisbane. She basically packed up a travel bag of mine booked me a flight, I came back to Brisbane and I and I, um, I never went back down there to play again. The best thing for her at that time was to go back to Brisbane and be back around a support network. The thing that makes me most proud of Kirby is the way that she realised herself and she actually got help. It was hard for me to see the light at the end of the tunnel. You could see a transition, you could see her come out of the darkness and then want to be part of getting on with life and then going back and playing rugby again. I just came back and went back to club and went back into the Reds. It gave me a bit of purpose again. Inaugural Super W season. I ended up captaining the Reds for that. So that was special and that helped me personally as well. Feel like I just had a lot more still left to offer. We had our first hit out against Fijiana here and our round two was over in Perth and in just ahead of um, half time I picked up the ball off the back of a ruck and I got drove into the ground um, and I ended up shattering my left eye socket. I had a couple of fractures in my left eye and my nose and we were short of the try line, <laughs> so I didn't even score. I didn't know it at the time, but that was the last game that I was going to play. Now, my mission is to inspire women in sport and in our community. She always puts others before herself. You know, I think a lot of those um, attempts to return from injury were because she wanted to play one more season with her coach, play one more season with her teammates because that's how much you know those people mean to her. She's always about supporting the people next to her. She's always about putting others first before her, and you know it's a true test of character of what she's been doing. She's obviously got a new organisation now, subbed her in, and it's great to see that you know she's been able to use her experiences through sport and able to pass on those experiences to others as well. Saapu'in is something that creates resources and workshops for uh, young girls and women using a vehicle of sport. I'm finishing um, up my postgrad in psychology, which hopefully um, goes hand in hand to create the resources that can be shared with these young people. Renz and I are having our first child in November and that's probably like the biggest and best distraction. If you know Kirby so far, she's driven man so yeah I think she's going to be the best mum. I can't wait and we're having a girl. I think that between us and between everything that we've all been through together um, she will be very loved and supported and whatever it is she chooses to do. I'm happy now seeing Kirby happy. I can see it in her face and for me that's remarkable. <laughs>